One of the more interesting and confounding problems when troubleshooting electrical circuits is the phenomenon of ghost or phantom voltage. And on AC circuits, you will sometimes see voltages that are as high or apparent voltages that are as high as the circuits you're working with and really there's nothing there at all. So we're going to explore that a little bit today. We'll talk about it first explain how it works, and then we're going to have a lab and we'll use various test instruments and see what happens. I've got a non-contact or a non-touch voltage sensor in my hand. Let me turn this on. And when I do, you can see we have an indicating light that tells me it's ready to detect a voltage if I get near a voltage in, within its range, and I'll reach down to this cord. And when I do, you can see it starts to change its, its color, it blinks, and it's, and it's a tone telling us that we have a voltage present. And these testers, as we explored in a previous video, work by capacitively coupling with an energized AC circuit. It has to do with the AC voltage in the circuit. I want to stress these do not work off of inductance. They do work off of that elect electrostatic field and they do have to be an AC circuit. Um, the thing about that is, let me drop this down. When we start talking about ghost voltages, which we are talking about today, they are also a product of capacitively coupling with an AC circuit. It's kind of the same phenomenon at some point, and, and we'll talk a little bit about that. When we talked in a previous uh, video about meter loading, we discussed how when you take measure of a circuit, you're drawing voltage and also taking current into your meter, and you can change the circuit and maybe impact the operation of a circuit. So they started developing meters with a high impedance input like this one. And in doing so, that also works with capacitive coupling to create the phenomenon of ghost voltage. And I have a couple of articles I wanted to read to discuss that rather than taking my word on that. The very first one is from NEMA, the National Electrical Manufacturers Association. And this was first produced in 1998 and then revised in 2003, but it's still very valid today. And this is uh, Phantom Voltages. This bulletin is intended to address the occurrence, occurrence of so-called phantom voltages, a phenomenon detected during the testing of electrical conductors in the field. Due to the high impedance of measuring instruments, a voltage reading may be detected on open, open conductors where there is no hard electrical connection to a voltage source. Conductors that are installed in close proximity to one another and are capacitively coupled to each other can cause this AC voltage reading. Such a reading could be two or three volts, or it may be as high as the voltage on adjacent conductors. This is what is referred to as a phantom voltage. According to Underwriters Laboratories, Inc., this can be a harmless reading and can be caused by the high impedance inputs of the measuring instrument, which places very little loading on the circuit under test. The capacitance is, excuse me, the capacitance is increased as the length of the run is increased. A 50-foot run may produce a pronounced capacitance effect whereas a one foot sample may not produce any. Since a phantom voltage is a physical phenomenon involving very small values of capacitance, it cannot energize a load or cause physiological damage to a person. Care must be taken to be sure the voltage reading is a phantom voltage, which is caused by improper use of high impedance multimeters and not as a result of a cable defect or improper installation, which may result in a shock hazard. In order to help minimize the likelihood of reaching a wrong conclusion from this phenomenon, NEMA recommends the use of a listed low impedance multimeter and place of a high impedance multimeter in order, uh, in, or other high impedance measuring device for testing on open conductors where there is no hard electrical connection. Without a low impedance measuring device, a high voltage reading is an incon inconclusive indication of possible faults in the cable. And then I would also like to read something from Fluke. This is just two very quick paragraphs, and this is what are ghost voltages and where are they encountered. And then I'll just read this two, this two, these two paragraphs. When you place your multimeter leads between an open circuit and the neutral conductor, you effectively complete the circuit through the input of the multimeter. The capacitance between the connected hot conductor and the floating conductor forms a voltage divider in conjunction with the multimeter input impedance. 
The multimeter then measures and displays the, revolt, the resulting voltage value. Most digital multimeters available today have an impedance that is high enough to show the capacitively coupled voltage, giving a false impression of a live conductor. The meter is actually measuring voltage coupled into the disconnected conductor. However, these voltage, voltages at times can be 80 to 85 percent of the hard voltage, what the hard voltage should be. If not recognized as a ghost voltage, additional time, effort, and money will be lost troubleshooting circuit problems, or as we say, chasing uh, ghost, ghosts or chasing ghost voltages. And finally, I want to mention there are really two very good ways to eliminate ghost voltages. One of them is de-energize all associated conductors in a common cable or a, a common raceway that might be giving you that ghost voltage or use a low impedance input instrument for testing. And we'll talk about our lab here in a minute, set it up, and we will use a bunch of different test instruments and see how this works. We're going to uh, explain our lab setup a little bit. We'll, I'll show you physically the lab, and then we'll do a little drawing on screen too that I think it'll help. I wanna make sure that we see this all the same. So we begin with a GFCI cord supplying power to a cord that I actually cut the end off of here. And I place the conductors on terminal boards so that I can read them more readily. And you can see I have, and I'm not energized right now, obviously, I have the hot or the ungrounded conductor here, the neutral and the grounded conductor here, and then I have a cord. And in this cord, on one end, I have all of the conductors capped off. They're not touching anything and they're, they're safed off on the end. And then on this end of the cord, I have the same conductors on a terminal board so that I can more readily read them. And what you'll notice is the only conductor that's going through the cord, uh, all the way through to the cord, is the grounded conductor. The other two conductors are free on both ends. And that's where we're going to produce a ghost voltage when we do so. Now, let's bring up the same drawing on the screen just so that I can show you a little bit more clearly what we're looking at. And so, now that we have it on the screen, you can see we're going to have a 120 volt supply so we'll have that going to the, the terminals on one end, and then we'll have the neutral and the ground tied to the terminals and dead-ended. And you can see on the yellow cord, I have on the far right, they are capped off. They are capped off, they're not going anywhere. Uh, and then the other one, the other conductors on the other end, I just have connected to a terminal board, board so we can read between them. And as a final note, uh, you will notice that the green wire looks blue to you and that's because of the way we're filming this. But these are green conductors, and I may call it green, and it's going to look blue to you, but it's really a green conductor. We've got our lab set up now, and you'll see I'm wearing gloves, and I'm off screen. And I'm wearing gloves because we are energized, and we do have exposed circuit parts and conductors up above us here. And you can see the uh, grounded or to the ungrounded wire goes into the cord and then uh, nothing else is connected. We're just connected to our terminal boards here. And I have a terminal board on one end of the cord so I can take measurements and then the other end is all safed off. And the very first thing I want to show you is that you will pick up a ghost voltage with a non-contact tester like this one. I have it set up and it's ready to indicate. And you can see I'm picking up a voltage. So we are live. When I go over here to my, uh, my neutral and my green, my green or my ground, I get no indication. But if I go over here to the cord, you can see now I'm getting an indication that there's a voltage there. And that's obvious there can't be one because these green, the green wire is over here and the white wire is here. They're not connected to anything. It's capacitively coupling. And I can get rid of it if I ground out the system. You can see it went away when I ground that out. You can't see that very well. It goes away when I ground it out. Uh, I would not recommend that as a practice. I only do that in the lab just to show how that works, but we want to make sure that we prove it is a ghost voltage before we ground anything. So in a moment here, I'm gonna set up and let's took it, take a look at another instrument. For our next little adventure here, we're going to look at the Volcon XL. It's an ideal uh, solenoid type tester. But the very first thing let's do, let's take a measurement of our circuit. And so I'll go to neutral here from the grounding conductor. And I don't know if you can hear that toning, but it's giving us an indication that we have a live voltage, correct? All right, now let's try over here to this side. And you can see we don't have anything going there, and it doesn't in in indicate anything there. 
But if I go between the ground on the, the incoming line, let me see if I can get out of your way to do this, and the ground here, you can see we're getting an indication. That's absolutely a ghost voltage because the green on the, on the cord, as we already expressed, is not going anywhere. But it's picking up the capacitive coupling on the, the grounded conductor, excuse me, the ungrounded conductor within the cord, and it's the same thing with the white. I get an indication of a ghost voltage. Interestingly enough, if I try to test to ground from on the cord itself though, I get no, no measurement because I just tripped out the GFCI. It impacted the circuit because it did not have a high enough impedance to not reach a threshold of four to six milliamps and it actually tripped the circuit out. But it does give us a ghost voltage. And as our final little venture, we're going to take a look at the fluke on this. We're going to use the Fluke 117 digital multimeter now, and this meter is really interesting because it has two settings for voltage. It has one here, which is an auto-ranging uh, AC voltage measurement mode, and then uh, it also has the low Z measurement mode, and we're going to use both of those. So let's start first with the auto-ranging uh, automatic uh, AC voltage auto-ranging mode, and let's see what we get. So first of all, let's test our circuit to see what we've got coming in. And I'll go from neutral to the unground or the grounding conductor ungrounded. And we have 122 volts. All right. If I go to this cord, I'll go to the green wire, which is not connected to anything, remember, to the ungrounded conductor here. I'm getting 3.3 volts. And if I go to the neutral here, I end up with 3.3 also. But to get our ghost voltage, if I go from the white on the power supply, let's see if I get out of your way here, white in the power supply, to the white in the cord, I actually show 79 volts. That's absolutely a ghost voltage. There can't be anything there because this white wire isn't connected to anything in the cord. And it's the same thing if I go to the green, I have that ghost voltage. And that's the, the thing that makes this a very interesting meter is it has this low Z setting. So I'm going to switch to the low Z setting. Now I'm in low Z. And hopefully you can see that display, okay? Put my gloves back on. And we'll take the same measurements as we did before. If I go to from the ground in the cord to the ungrounded conductor here, I get nothing. And the same thing if I go to the white conductor here, I get nothing, which I should not see anything. And now let's try from the white on the supply to the white in the cord, I get nothing, I get 0.1. And then from the green to the green in the cord, and you can see we have eliminated the ghost voltage by using the low Z setting. So let's back out of the lab and let's have a little, little conversation. We'll be done here. I want to conclude by talking briefly about using the low Z setting on this meter or using a meter with a low impedance input. If you're troubleshooting power circuits, receptacle loads, lighting loads, distribution stuff, you can use a low impedance meter and not have any issue and it might be a good idea. If you start getting into an area where you're troubleshooting sensitive electronics or you may impact the circuit, you want to switch this one to a high impedance input or have some sort of a test instrument that has that. But for the most part, um, on most electrical systems, you can use low Z and, and be assured you're not getting ghost voltages. If you suspect you have a ghost voltage, uh, try to get a low impedance uh, input device or use this in low impedance input mode so that you can make sure you're not dealing with a ghost voltage.